Hello everyone. At the start of the history, a boy searches for his brother and finds him at a party where the attendees were immersed in celebration. He learns from someone that his brother is upstairs. Upon reaching the room, he discovers his brother in a distressed state, uttering nonsensical things about their deceased father. This revelation terrifies him as their father had passed away years earlier. He manages to bring his brother downstairs, only for his brother to assault him with a knife, resulting in a tragic end. The incident leaves everyone at the party in a state of shock. The narrative then shifts to a 17-year-old girl named Mia, who is staying with her relatives following her mother's death. It is apparent that Mia's relationship with her father is strained. She receives a call from her friend Jade's brother, Riley, who is waiting on the sidewalk because Jade forgot to pick him up, prompting Mia to go fetch him in her car. During their drive, they encounter an injured kangaroo lying in the road. Mia, not wanting to harm the animal, carefully avoids it and continues on. She brings Riley to her home, where they meet Jade and another friend who used to be close to Mia. Despite the past, Mia chooses not to dwell on these matters and focuses on her affection for Jade. Later, Mia shares a video with Jade, showing a girl with unnaturally large black eyes, suggesting demonic possession. That evening, as they attend a friend's party, they decide to play a game called Talk To Me. Mia participates eagerly, getting tied to a chair while a friend places a candle and a peculiar hand statue on the table before her. She is instructed to shake hands with the statue and invite it to communicate by saying, talk to me, just before the lights are turned off. When Mia interacts with the statue, it responds by shaking her hand. This startles her as she sees an old man before her, causing her to recoil. Despite her initial reluctance, her friends persuade her to try again. This time, she openly invites any malevolent presence into her space. Suddenly, she sees Riley's reflection and warns him of an unseen presence behind him, which frightens Riley since he is surrounded by friends and uncertain of what could be lurking. Mia's eyes turn dark, and she urges Riley to flee just as the game's time limit expires. Her friends quickly separate her from the statue, and the candle goes out, bringing Mia back to reality. The aftermath leaves everyone questioning what exactly happened to Mia. That night, Riley finds himself unable to sleep, haunted by the day's events. Seeking comfort, he attempts to join his sister's brother-in-law, only to be turned away. Eventually, he settles near Mia in the lounge, where she shares a recurring dream with him about standing in front of a mirror without seeing her reflection. As they reflect on the game, Mia describes feeling as though she was levitating. Riley falls asleep during the conversation, and Mia tenderly cares for him, but it's revealed her hand harbors a sinister, dark presence. Mia's encounter during the game has evidently left her possessed, a detail underscored by her actions and the ominous appearance of her hand. Meanwhile, at Jed's house, Jed's mother cautions the youngsters against alcohol and drugs before leaving. Curiosity about the statue leads Mia to inquire about its origins. A friend explains its vague history, mentioning it was severed from a medium to maintain a connection with the spirit world, implying the statue serves as a bridge to the supernatural. As the game with the hand statue continues, each participant records their experiences, leading to an atmosphere filled with enjoyment and laughter, despite Jed's refusal to partake. He adamantly declines Riley's suggestion to play and exits the scene. With Jed absent, Mia, under the influence of a demonic presence, encourages Riley to engage with the game. Her possession dictates her actions and words, following the demonic entity's commands. When Riley begins the game and welcomes any entities by saying, I let you in, an unexpected turn occurs. Mia's mother's spirit seemingly communicates with Mia, though the allotted time for the game expires. Despite the interruption, Mia senses her mother's presence and hears her voice. However, the situation escalates as the same malevolent spirit previously interested in Riley enters him, echoing Mia's earlier warning. The immediate aftermath involves Riley injuring himself severely by hitting his head against a table. The incident prompts police intervention, leading to inquiries about Riley's condition, which had deteriorated significantly, necessitating hospitalization. Later, when Mia returns home, her father attempts to connect with her, but she retreats to her room, avoiding any conversation. Eventually, she visits the hospital to see Riley, grappling with the night's traumatic events and their impact on those involved. Mia is acutely aware of the necessity to confront Riley's family at the hospital, especially since she had sanctioned the game that led to his current state. Upon her arrival, her fears are realized when Jade, outraged, confronts her for the role she played in her brother's condition. This confrontation leaves Mia deeply upset, and she leaves the hospital with one of Jade's friends, not wanting to be alone that night. The friend offers Mia a place to stay, providing some solace amidst the turmoil. Exhausted by the events, 
Mia attempts to find some comfort in watching a video of her mother, but is soon overwhelmed by sleep. In her dream, she envisions her mother at the time of her death, only to awake to the sight of her own hands bleeding from broken nails, a frightful vision that turns out to be another layer of her nightmare. Her terror escalates when she believes she senses another presence in her room, leading her to check on Jade's friend, only to discover a horrifying scene of a demon seemingly preying on him. However, the terror flips when the friend awakens to find Mia in an alarming position. Meanwhile, at the hospital, Jade and her mother face a chilling moment when Riley, under demonic influence, attacks Jade and laughs maniacally, reinforcing the demonic torment by suggesting Mia end his suffering permanently. In desperation, Mia shares these terrifying experiences with her friends and seeks out the individual from the beginning of the story, whose tragedy mirrors her own. The boy confirms the malevolent nature of the hand statue, labeling it a conduit to the spirit world, but admits ignorance of its full extent. Faced with these dark revelations and the lack of a clear solution, Mia's friends find themselves at a crossroads, uncertain of how to proceed. Mia, alongside Jade and another friend, returns to the hospital, hypothesizing that a part of the game was left unfinished, specifically when Riley injured himself. They speculate this incident might have facilitated the devil's entry into Riley. Attempting a resolution, they present the sinister hand statue to Riley, but to no avail. Mia then decides to directly engage with the statue, hoping to communicate with Riley, but instead, she encounters a young girl who cryptically welcomes her into the realm of spirits. In this harrowing visitation, Mia sees Riley suffering under demonic influence, an ordeal that leaves her distraught and in tears upon her return to reality. Back home, her father tries to provide comfort by sharing a letter from Mia's mother, intended to offer peace and solace. However, the moment is shattered by a sinister whisper suggesting deceit by her father. This leads to a terrifying confrontation where Mia, misled by demonic illusion, attacks what she perceives to be her father, only to realize too late the harm she inflicted was not on a demon, but on her father himself. In her turmoil, Mia reaches out to Jade, imploring her to come over, while concurrently, Mia maneuvers Riley out of the hospital, unbeknownst to Jade. This ploy distracts Jade, allowing Mia to continue her ominous agenda with Riley. Jade, arriving at Mia's house and finding a gruesome scene, grasps the severity of Mia's possession and the immediate danger surrounding them. This realization compels her to inform her mother and rush back to the hospital, piecing together the chilling narrative of possession and its destructive path. As Mia deliberates on the fate of Riley, contemplating a drastic decision reminiscent of her earlier encounter with a kangaroo, she is confronted by an apparition of her mother, now an agent of malevolence urging her towards violence. In a pivotal moment, Mia decides to sacrifice herself rather than Riley, stepping into the path of an oncoming vehicle. Jade's timely intervention spares Mia from immediate harm, but the aftermath sees Mia hospitalized, facing a chilling revelation in her reflection, or rather the absence of it, in a mirror, signaling her entrapment in the spirit world. In this shadowy realm, Mia is drawn to the faint glow of a candle, discovering a hand poised over the flame. Touching the hand triggers a vision of a boy, signifying the hand's readiness to ensnare another soul in its game. Mia's attempt to protect Riley has led her to a perilous juncture, her fate a stark reminder of the hand's sinister influence. What do you think? Is the movie worth seeing or not? Leave your answer in the comments and subscribe so you don't miss the summary of your favorite films.